In my last video, I briefly touched on a dark web game called ZX7. From what we knew of it back then, it was discovered via a dark web search engine, involved binary numbers, a secret society, and was filled with hidden messages. Needless to say, we made a lot of progress in our Discord server over the last few weeks. We also had a lot of new people joining specifically for this internet mystery. So, to make life easier for oldies and newbies alike, and so people stop asking us the same questions over and over again, I'm going to catch you up to speed on what we know so far. But, uh, before we begin, I want to get something out of the way. Not surprisingly, I've been accused of creating ZX7 myself for publicity. I'm sure the accusations won't end here, but for the sake of transparency, here is the basic rundown of how I came across the game. In the middle of making my last video, I realized I needed more content. So, as I typically do, I opened Tor Browser, went to the Onion Land search engine, typed in terms like video game, dark web game, and .exe. About an hour later, my browser had 20 plus tabs open, which is a nightmare in Tor, mind you. ZX7 was one of them. It could have been discovered via the search engine directly, or via an Onion directory. But if you want to replicate my digital footsteps, I wish you the best of luck. In the meantime, let's dive in. The first thing that caught my interest was the ZX7 website. It's pretty empty, save for the .exe, a login box, a place to submit access codes, and a few lines of text. Here's the text. Apply and unlock. Number one, download the identifier re-ZX7 video game. Identify, respond, obtain access code, unlock ZX7, and join society. If you categorize as Exolfly, please classify yourself by downloading the identifier and obtaining the access code. After identification is complete, you will rejoin society and assist with assignment CX7. So of course, your first instinct is to be sketched out. Downloading an execution file off of the dark web, how stupid do you need to be? Okay, so, I admit I was a little careless. I ran the file through several virus checkers and didn't run into any issues, so I downloaded and opened it. You could say curiosity killed the Eden. Fortunately, it was confirmed later on that there were no malicious files, but I'll get into that in a bit. For now, let's discuss the game itself. <laughs> At first glance, the gameplay is as simple as clicking binary numbers to get a high score, which is also in binary. But after 10 or so seconds of playing, abstract images and symbols start popping up, sometimes asking yes or no. A few people in our Discord analyzed the images, which included some type of flower, a radioactivity sign, and symbols decoded to read, we are here. Admittedly, the images and symbols have taken a backseat in our investigation. So, while we've made some progress here, there's still undoubtedly more progress to be made. As for the game, after getting past the images saying yes or no, the game ends and you're given an access code to submit on the website. It's worth mentioning some people had difficulties getting to this point. In fact, some people had difficulties even seeing the abstract images. And every single person who did receive an access code got the same results when submitting it to the website. Access denied. This is essentially where the game investigation ends, as investigators started reverse engineering the game files instead. Let's talk about that next. A few people in our Discord took it upon themselves to reverse engineer the poop out of the ZX7 files. This proved to be worth it as they uncovered several more hidden messages. These included DNA match in the audio file, 
file1.wav and we are here, reunite, come home, DNA match, null, different, origin, unlock, and mind in Z file. Additionally, another discorder tore apart the ZX7 files and confirmed there was nothing malicious to worry about. It was also around this time, yet another discorder discovered the website's login box and access code submission box were defunct. In other words, even if you had the right login or access code, you'd still be sent to the page Access Denied. This was, of course, disappointing. But hope remained. Maybe the website was obsolete. Either way, it didn't stop the investigation, and it didn't stop trolls from coming out of the woodwork. But there was one troll in particular worth talking about. Sometime into the investigation, we were bombarded with trolls. No surprise there, but one troll in particular took the cake with their Reddit comment. This is a throwaway account for obvious reasons. I've seen ZX7 trending in a few Reddit communities now. I made this account and am sending this message as a favor to you and anyone else investigating. Stop investigating. I know this comment will likely make you want to investigate more, but please trust me when I say it's not in your best interest. Exultly is a society you will never be able to join. Its members are people you never want to come across online or in real life. And Project ZX7 is a danger to anyone non exalfly that comes across it. I suspect the higher ups will move the website to a new .onion address soon. The very least I can do is give you their contact information. They are the only one who can give more information on this, so they will know what to disclose and what to keep under wraps. The comment was left on a Discorder's Reddit post, including an email, zx7 at airmail.cc, to which he replied to the comment and then sent the account a message. The troll replied shortly after. I am replying only to this before I delete this account. We aren't your enemies. They would rather leave you satisfied and have you abandon the investigation than continue it and get in too deep. Sure enough, they deleted their account immediately. After this, our investigators all but completely forgot about the troll and their edgy message. We concluded they were full of glitter, but keep them in the back of your mind while we discuss the next part. Eventually, a couple weeks into the investigation, one of our discorders noticed the zx7.exe file had been updated to include two new files. But at the same time, the game no longer worked. This, of course, sparked a new array of interest in the mystery. And once again, the more techie guys came out to tear apart the new files. Now, I will be the first to admit I am not familiar with reverse engineering at all, but uh, I will quote the main guy who dived into the new files along with the screenshots he provided. So we can see crypt.bin uses string comparison with stuff in RDI and RSI registers. Those registers contain command line arguments passed to main. We can see it expects string ZX7. Sure enough, Feeding it with the argument ZX7 creates a new file. So the key is ZX7 times 7, and the IV is exalfly times 3. Shortly after this, a new but incomplete .onion link was discovered, along with the file ZX7.info, which seemed to be an application of sorts, as it asked for your birth month, area of study, abilities and expertise, and how you plan to aid exalfly. And then finally, after more reverse engineer diving, we had the other half of the .onion link, which led to a simple page featuring one sentence. Submit results to zx7 at airmail.cc. Does that email look familiar to you? Because we just about pooped our pants when we saw it and realized what it meant. The troll from the beginning of the investigation was not a troll. 
Their comment was legit. This was a huge breakthrough in the investigation. Needless to say, things were about to get way more interesting. Although we weren't positive what the results referred to on the new .angin URL, we had a good guess. One Discorder sent in their access code, along with the application discovered in the new ZX7 files. Soon after, the first challenge arrived. Your application is under review. If approved, you will assist Exalfly in rejoining society by working exclusively on Project ZX7. You will receive all applicable Exalfly benefits regardless of DNA match. This includes level 1 clearance with opportunity to ascend, unlimited access to all project documents, unlimited access to all project tools, restricted access to ZX7 system, access to Exalfly communication line. If additional action is needed throughout the project proceedings, clearance levels will be adjusted accordingly. If you are reading this message, you've already accepted the terms of the non exophily application process. The next step will be detailed below. If you fail to complete the test in time or you fall short of the requirements, you will be deleted from the system. We look forward to the merging. Test 1, non exophily Evaluation. This code is for a $15 Amazon gift card. To pass the non exophily evaluation, please use the gift card in a way that will positively influence humanity. You have 48 hours from the delivery of the items to complete the test. Please submit proof of delivery date, receipt, and shipment. If we do not hear back from you within 24 hours, you will be deleted from the system. Of course, this sparked interest, and soon more people were submitting applications. From all of the email responses, we concluded the first half of the Challenge 1 email is verbatim for everyone. The first challenge, on the other hand, varies from person to person. For example, someone had to pick up trash in their neighborhood, while another person had to offer advice to someone in need, and another person had to give out compliments. Eventually, it was confirmed Test 1 non exophily Evaluation was comprised of three parts. The first part seems to revolve around helping people or helping the environment. The second challenge has more to do with helping yourself. Someone had to ask for advice, someone else had to do a kind gesture for their own self, and another person had to be selfish in a way that would also benefit others. The third challenge, from what we've seen so far, seems to be assigned based on the applicant specifically. So, the person or people behind the email will assign a challenge based on your results up to that point. For example, a person's right to be angry and the ability to control that anger, a person's ability to be honest, and a person's ability to commit to an activity. And so far, although many are well on their way by completing the third challenge, only one person has made it to the end of test one. When the first Discorder to ever submit an application to the email sent in their Part 3 challenge, they received the following email. Exolfly are pleased to inform you of your successful completion of Test 1 non exophily Evaluation. The quota for applicants has yet to be met, therefore Test 2 Intellectual Challenge cannot move forward. Exolfly ask you to encourage others to apply. You will receive notice when the non exophily applicant quota is met, and further notice when test 2 is set to begin. So, as you can see, we're currently waiting in limbo to either finish our challenges and pass test 1, or waiting for test 2 to begin. As for what this internet mystery means, your guess is as good as mine. It could be a secret society recruiting people via the dark web because something about their society is illegal, or perhaps they're hiding from somebody. Or maybe we were never meant to find it, and these challenges were a spontaneous reaction to the sudden attention. 
After all, no one is really sure what exalfly and non exalfly mean, except that exalfly is used to refer to them and non exalfly is used to refer to us. Personally, the theory that makes the most sense to me is they're based on the dark web because they're either hiding from someone like the government or they're an environment-friendly hacktivist group recruiting members. But really, I can't think of a single theory that makes complete sense. While an environmentally friendly hacktivist group is an easy theory that makes the most sense, it would be cool if this led to some type of new utopia being built right under her noses. But for right now, all we can do is wait for more information. Which leads me to say, if you're interested in this internet mystery, feel free to join our Discord. The link will be in the video description. If you don't want to join the Discord but you still want to apply, I'll leave the ZX7 email in the description too. Just keep in mind, if you don't join the Discord, you still need to include the application questions in the email. Those who left them out received emails saying, application denied. Good luck. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I can't remember the last time I've been so excited over an internet mystery. I can't stress enough, if this interests you, come join our Discord so you can apply yourself and share your theories. On another topic, I want to apologize quickly for taking so long to make this video. Life happened, and gosh dang it if tax season doesn't stress me the fork out. If you're in a complicated work situation like I am and you don't have access to local tax professionals, I'll leave the number for the person who did mine. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.